Hi friends, hope you all are doing well. We got a long layoff due to unavoidable circumstances. So, um, instead of waiting for the classes to resume, we thought of having uh, uh, starting the uh, video lecturing classes. Uh, so, what I am going to do today is that um, I am starting a topic called as a small topic called as accounting for buyback of shares. In fact, uh, when we have uh, in um, the, the last topic, which uh, we were in the middle of the topic, actually, we have completed the theory part of bank accounts. And uh, I think we have done um, a small uh, portion of the problems that is rebate on uh, bills discounted so that we can take up later on. So um, in the meanwhile, let me start a, a small chapter called as accounting for buyback of shares. And it is clearly visible on screen. You can see that um, the learning objectives of this chapter is meaning of buyback of shares and the three sources of funds for buyback of uh, shares, conditions for buy buyback, and accounting entries for buyback. When you uh, look at this chapter, I think uh, been, uh, you can see this on screen, which is uh, display. The, the main points have been uh, is, is being displayed on the screen and also coupled with you also can refer to the study materials, study material for any further assistance or clarification. So uh, to begin with the introduction part of it, uh, what is the meaning of buyback? I think you can see the term buyback of shares implies that act of purchasing its own shares by a company. So when the, the concept was actually, it was there in uh, USA, maybe when uh, the the late Prime Minister, former Prime Minister Atal Bihari Vajpayee, during his regime, the concept of buyback of shares has been an ordinance has been passed by the government, and I think if I'm not wrong, it's 2002 somewhere, and and from that time onwards, the concept of buyback of shares have been included in the Companies Act 1956 old prior to Companies Act 2013. Now, whatever we are looking at. The, the provisions which are as per Companies Act 2013. Now, when you look at the topic of buyback of shares, generally when the company uh, purchases uh, the shares, that means they bought back the shares, they have to cancel. This is the first and for most important point you should understand. The when company goes for buyback of shares, it results in a decrease in share capital of a company. So why it decrease share capital? Because the shares which has been purchased by the company is going to be cancelled. When shares have been cancelled, what happens? You know that there is a decrease in share capital of a company. And the most important point you should remember, a company cannot buy its own shares for the purpose of investment, unlike what we have seen. Uh, in case of uh, the debentures, redemption of debentures. In the topic you have learned in group 1 accounts that uh, a, a company can purchase its own debentures for uh, as an investment. Uh, then, who can go for purchase of uh, buyback of shares? A company having sufficient cash, a company having sufficient cash may decide to buy back its own shares. So the interesting point we should understand is that why companies should go for buyback. What are the advantages for buyback, which is not there in the list, but you can refer to the study material. The main advantage of buyback is that earning per share will increase. Why an in, in, earning per share will increase? Because when you are going to cancel the shares after buyback of the shares, then what happens? The volume of shares will come down. Naturally, the income will be there, but suppose you got around 1 lakh shares, you purchased around 15,000 shares, then what happens? The shares have come reduced to 85,000. What are the earnings which are there? And that will be distributed to 85,000 shareholders, on 85,000 shares rather. So then what happened? Obviously, the earning per share will increase. And also, Generally, when company goes for buyback of shares, the promoter's holding will increase. The reason is that whatever the share that has been bought back have been 
cancelled because of that what happens the promoter shareholding will increase and the another advantage when why a company should go is that to discourage others to make hostile bid to take over the company as buyback will increase a promoter's holding like what happens sometimes uh, somebody is trying to encroach you a company by buying the shares and like they want to take over so um, then in such case the company may have the option of going for buyback of shares and because of that what happened the promoter's holding will increase so that nobody can take over the affairs of the company and the one more advantage which you are having is that whenever there is a uh, like i mean uh, the in stock exchange with the share price is less than its worth generally it happens in depressed market like we are seeing due to coronavirus we have been seeing this dip in the uh, share value in the stock exchanges various stock exchanges and then uh, then in such case if the company feels that its opinion on the company management is that the share price is less than it worth then company can go for buyback of shares and and also one more option is when company is having um, surplus cash and this is a very uh, good way of um, uh, making payment to them by buying your own shares it means to pay surplus cash to shareholders when the company does not need it for the business i think these are the advantages of going for buy back now if you look at on the screen it is very clearly uh, see that we have discussed about meaning of buy back shares couple of points have added you can refer to the study material from there you can pick up the points which i have shared with you and now if you look at the three sources of funds for buy back it has been mentioned in section 68 subsection 1 just for it to have a clarity if you look at the legal framework which is not there on the screen but just to add let me share with you that applicable to it can be either a private limited company unlisted public company or it is a, a limited company um, or uh, applicable to uh, listed public limited company it means we are having the legal provisions of companies act which is applicable to private limited companies or unlisted public companies and and applicable to listed public limited companies the common sections if you look at it is section 68 69 70 of the companies act act is applicable for both the cases i repeat once again both the cases means applicable to private limited companies and unlisted public companies and second is applicable to listed public listed public limited companies which is common section 68 69 70 of the companies act is common and you should whenever you are going for buy back you look at the legal uh, framework it is also to be discussed along with rule 17 of the companies share capital and debentures rules 2014 these two also applicable the rule 17 is also applicable for uh, applicable to private limited companies and unlisted public companies and it is also applicable to listed public limited companies let me repeat once again 68 69 70 section rule 17 is applicable to private limited companies and unlisted public companies and also applicable to listed public limited companies as you learned in group 1 company accounts that whenever sebi guidelines we talk about sebi guidelines which are applicable only to only to listed public limited companies that means you are having an additional point which is applicable to um, listed public limited companies this is all the legal framework but we are into accounting part just to let me i am sh sharing this information only to have a clarity of the topic now coming back to this if you look at the the second point which has been which is clearly there on the screen is that the three sources of funds for buyback uh, if you look at i am not talking about the section 68 one i think that is clearly visible on the screen a company may purchase its own shares or other specified securities out of its free reserves i think we had discussion on this in group 1 what is free reserves i think you all are aware of free reserves or reserves which are which are available for declaration of free reserves which are available for declaration of dividend distribution of rather distribution of dividend as per latest audited balance sheet of a company such reserves are called as free reserves simple words the revenue reserves which are available for declaration of 
dividend like you can take an example of general is or profit and loss account etc dividend equalization fund etc then second point is security premium security premium also can be uh, used by a company for purchase of its own shares and third point which you look at is the proceeds of any shares or other specified securities when you look at the proceeds of any shares or other specified securities means proceeds means like you need to go for public issue for purchase of for issue of shares for raising the money i think this is also another option but i think the small condition that has been mentioned here is that proceed that no buyback of any kind of shares or other specified securities shall be made out of the proceeds of an earlier issue of the same kind of share or same kind of other securities in simple words like let me explain to this point buyback of shares is not allowed out of fresh issue of equity shares since fresh issue of shares for buying back does not make any financial sense see i am going for buyback of equity shares is there any sense any financial sense for me to go and issue again equity shares for raising the money so there is no financial so therefore 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 a buyback is allowed by utilizing proceeds from issue of issue of suppose issue of preference shares for buyback of equity shares or or you can go for issue of issue of hybrid in, instruments like convertible debentures bonds secured and unsecured loans that means you can go for this for raising of the money that is required for buyback of the shares now i think if you look at this these three points the first and second one is um, like i mean uh, uh, you got substantial reserves you you don't know what to do i think you don't want to go for fresh issue the reason is that you got huge amount you you no, no need for you to go for uh, fresh issue say so, as i told you you want to go for uh, buy back of your equity shares there's no need for you to buy there's no need for you to buy there is no sorry there is no need for you to uh, issue equity shares for buy back of equity shares is this clear when you want to go for buy back of equity shares this as i told you there is no financial sense in going for issue of equity shares point number 1 and that too when you have to go go for raising of capital for generation of funds when you don't have free users or when you don't have security premium then what happens the free users or security premium is not sufficient or then in such case you have to go for proceeds of any shares but for buyback of equity shares you cannot issue equity shares you can go for issue of preference shares or you can go for issue of debentures so the third point question arises it's an option if you got sufficient funds i think you got enough free reserves you got security premium no need to go for proceeds of any shares is this clear now if you look at the conditions for buyback which has been mentioned section 68 when you whenever company wants to go for go back for for buyback it should be authorized by articles the buyback must be authorized by articles the second point is that special resolution or board resolution when you need special resolution when you need a board resolution the special resolution must be passed in general meeting of shareholders okay the board must pass a resolution at its meeting where the buyback does not exceed 10% of the total equity paid up capital and free reserves of the company that means whenever whenever you are going for whenever you are going for whenever you are going for buyback of shares whenever you are going for buyback of shares the board must pass a resolution if it is buyback does not exceed 10% if it exceed 10% you have to go for special resolution simple and then before you go to buyback of shares all the shares for buyback must be fully paid the partly paid you have to convert into fully paid then only you can go for buyback 
the second next point time limit the buyback must be completed within 12 months from the date of passing the special special resolution or board resolution whatever the case may be is this clear then next from whom the buyback can be from the existing shareholders or security holders on a proportionate basis you can go for buyback the source from where you can buy back from where you can buy the shares from the existing shareholders or security holders on a proportionate basis or from the open market or third point by purchasing the security issued to employees of the company under scheme of stock option we are also having a topic called a stock option we can discuss after this or sweat equity you know sweat equity means the shares which are apply, um, is allotted to the employees of the company then we call as sweat equity shares the next one declaration of solvency before you go for buyback the company must file a declaration of solvency within the registrar ncb in the form of an affidavit signed by at least two directors of the company the affidavit must state the board had made full inquiry into the affairs of the company as a result of which they have formed an option that the company is capable of meeting its liabilities and will not render insolvent within a period of one year from the date of declaration adopted by board now i think if you look at the point here that the the financial position like I mean if you if you look at the financial affairs affairs means it's a, the financial position uh, is not going to be affected means if you go for buyback that you should see that you are going for buyback and you should satisfy them you are in solvent your company is solvent your company is not in solvent i think that 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 declaration has to be given and that declaration can be given because that declaration has to be given and that affidavit has to be submitted to the registrar and sebi by the board after making full inquiry into the affairs of the company that they are able to capable of meeting its liabilities because when a company can become insolvent and assets are not sufficient to clear of liabilities and the next point destroy so like i mean after buying back the shares as, as i told you share capital account will be reduced we have discussed about share capital account um will be reduced because you are going for cancellation of these shares so company shall extinguish and physically destroy the shares or securities so bought back within 7 days of the last date of completion of buyback so that means after buyback of shares within 7 days the company has to physically destroy the shares then restriction on further issue within 6 months where a company completes a buyback of shares or other specified securities it shall not make a further issue of same size same shares or other securities including allotment of any new shares or other specified security within a period of 6 months that means after buyback within 6 months you cannot go for any further issue there are some exception what is that they can go for bonus issue or in discharge of subsisting obligations such as conversion of warrants stock option schemes sweat equity or conversion of preference shares or debentures into equity shares i think that day is allowable but not go for going for uh, a fresh issue of shares now if you look at as i told you apart from section 68 69 70 we are also having cb guidelines which are applicable for listed public limited companies and a few points have been mentioned i think it's just for theoretical part i think you can go through this in case of listed shares buyback must be as per cb guidelines and in case of unlisted shares buyback must be as per share capital and debentures rules 2014 uh, cbs regulation for listed shares if you look at the cbs regulation the point 1 no offer of buyback for at least 15% of the paid up capital and free reserves of the company shall be made off from the open market that means whatever the shares which are available you cannot go for offer to buy back of at least 15% mean leaving 15% you can go for it. that may mean 15% can be will be shall be kept aside then a company shall not make any offer of buy back within a period of one year recount from the date of closure of the preceding offer of buy back that means within a period that means this year you went for buy back you need to wait for again one year for going for again buy back this is as per cbi guidelines and the next point if you look at it the company shall ensure that at least 50% of the amount earmarked for buyback is utilized for buying back shares or other specified securities the company shall ensure that at least 
50% of the amount year mark. That means you need funds for buying back the shares. And whenever you are going for buy back, buy back of shares or other specific securities, you should allow, you should allow, you should use 50% of the amount that has been kept aside for kept aside for buy back of equity shares. Now here is one more doubt you may be getting after looking at the specified securities. So what is specified securities? Specified securities include employee stock option scheme or other securities as may be notified by the central government from time to time. Okay. Specified securities are those securities which includes employee stock option or other securities as may be notified by central government from time to time. Then now let us look at the accounting treatment. We are going for accounting treatment. As I told you, the first two points, the company can go for buyback either from free reserves or a security premium account. We have discussed about that. Um, like now, I think if, when I am explaining this, it, it resembles a bit of a redemption of preference shares chapter. Okay. Why? Because you, you, you learn a bit of capital redemption reserve account. Uh, we have learned in the case of uh, redemption of uh, uh, preference shares. Am I right? So, when a company purchases its own shares out of free reserves or security premium, then a sum equal to notional value of the shares so purchased shall be transferred to CRR. As I told you, a company goes for purchase of its own shares from free reserves or security premium. And then, a sum equal to nominal value of shares so purchased. It means without going for fresh issue, a company is going for buyback of shares out of its free reserves or security premium. Whatever the nominal value of shares so purchased for buyback and equal to that, you have to create CRR. I think if you are good enough, if you got good memory of what we have discussed in case of redemption of preference shares, the same point is applicable. In, in sense, why should you create CRR? We, have, we, we, we discussed a bit of it in uh, redemption of preference shares. So, capital redemption reserve is nothing but we are capitalizing. See, the free reserves are except security premiums available for declaration of dividend. No? You are blocking that money. You are blocking that money. So, normally people will be looking at, array, what about uh, you are using the money, company money you are using for buyback of shares. The the, 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 the the creators of the company, the liability holders definitely will be asking the company, what about our position? Then we said we got substantial reserve, we are using it without going for fresh issue. Okay, then fine. We are going for utilization of your free reserves or security premium. Then what happens? That amount otherwise available, except security premium is available for declaration of dividend. So that amount you are keeping CRRC, we are not going to touch it. So what is your problem? So the advantage is that the company has become substantial reserves, has built up substantial reserves. The advantage to the company is that you are capitalizing it, means it is like untouchable. We are not going to use it. That we are going to use it only for issue of bonus shares. We are going for bonus shares, is nothing but you are giving promotion. We have discussed the redemption of preference shares. The CRR will be converted to bonus shares, means share capital will increase. So, I think there will not be any problem. With the creators of the company or the liability holders, they may not go for objection. I think to satisfy them, I think I think this clause has been inserted. I think we had this detailed discussion about this in the topic called as redemption of preferences. Now, when you are going for accounting treatment, we are also having three test conditions. We are also having three test conditions uh, for uh, maximum number of shares maximum number of shares to be purchased maximum number of shares uh, bought back and regarding that i think you can see that the point here the fourth point how to calculate the maximum number of shares that can be bought back so for that we are having three test conditions and these three test conditions has been clearly mentioned just for your reference you can see maximum limit of amount, maximum limit of amount of equity shares to be bought back. The buyback of the shares must not exceed 25% of the total paid up capital and free reserves. I think the condition number one is that maximum limit, maximum limit of amount of equity shares to be bought back 
must not exceed 25% total paid up capital free raises. I think we may all have discussed about that. Then maximum limit number of equity shares to be bought back in any financial year. The buyback of equity shares in financial year must not exceed 25% of the total paid of equity capital. Now here the maximum limit of amount that has been mentioned and maximum limit of number of equity shares is, it must not exceed 25% of total paid up equity capital. Next maximum debt equity ratio. The debt equity ratio must not be more than 2 is to 1 after such buyback. Simple words what is 2 is to 1 means. Suppose the, the debt, I think debt means he has been mentioned after buyback, secured and unsecured. Equity after buyback, capital and freezes. Let me give a small example to explain this. Suppose secured and unsecured together come in 6 lakhs. And the equity after buyback, not be more than 2 is to 1, means suppose 6 lakhs is the debt. And equity must be 3 lakhs. It cannot be more than that. Must not be more than 2 is to 1. Is this clear? That means the debt equity ratio must not be more than 2 is to 1. It will be 2 times, 2 times of it. Then, for the purpose of section 68, free reserves mean free reserves available for distribution of dividend and include the balance of security premium. That is what that has been mentioned. So, here free reserves for the purpose of buyback only, it includes which one? Security premium. Now, it has been given like a formula for you to do the problems. The calculation of maximum number of equations that can be bought back as per following three tests. We are having the whatever we have discussed there has been mentioned given like a test. The title they have given first remember outstanding share test is nothing but 25% of total outstanding equity shares. And then we can say resource test is 25% of Paid up capital plus free reserves by buyback price per share. Generally, when you are going for buyback, the price of the share will be mentioned. I think then we will be getting a resource test. The value will be getting it. Then debt equity ratio test. Paid up capital after buyback plus free reserves after buyback minus minimum equity funds. What is minimum equity funds? Is nothing but debt funds by two. As I told you, debt funds by 2. Suppose as I told you in the example, debt funds is 6 lakhs. By 2 means 3 lakhs. By buyback price per share. I think this will be having clarity when we take up one problem. Just try to remember, go through this uh, the conditions. Just to uh, read twice or thrice. To, you should be able to because in problem you can expect uh, the calculation of maximum number of shares that can be bought back. We are having few problems on that. I think we will work out on that. So, this is step number one, how to calculate maximum number of shares that can be bought. In that, we got step number one already. Step number two is maximum number of equity shares that can be bought back is least in above three tests. Whatever the least value we are going to get, that is the maximum number of equity shares. I think with this, we have concluded the theory part which is needed for us to understand the topic. Now, we will be going to learn. This is a very simple topic, my dear friend. No need to panic. The theory part is just to have a clarity whenever I believe in it, whenever you are going for doing the problems, the theory will definitely will help you out. So that is the reason why I am sharing the theory part with you. I think this notes will be useful to you. I think the study material bit, bit I think you got more legal uh, language that has been used. I think for you to have a clarity, a pick different material. I think that that is what has been pasted here that you can see will give you clarity. No need to worry about the theory part of it. Let, let us look at the accounting treatment of it. The various general entries to be passed on buyback are given as follows. Number one, as I told you, a partly paid shares has to be converted to fully paid. If there is any such chance in the problem, I think you have learned this in company final accounts, I mean company accounts in CF Foundation itself. Like any final call money is due, you can write the entry equity share final call to equity share capital on receipt of final call, bank account at R2 equity share final call. Now, sometimes, as I told you, you may need funds, like you got enough source, um, like enough free reserves, but you don't have funds. Then in such case, company may, uh, doesn't have much uh, funds to buy the shares. The company can sell 
company can sell investment i think whenever we are discussing we we'll just try to recollect uh, the topic of redemption of preferences i'm only i'm just trying to compare you like you may go for redemption of preferences you got enough reserves uh, that can be used for creation of crr but you need funds for funds instead of going for your uh, fresh issue you can go for sale of your investment this is a good option so to realize investment to provide cash for buyback when you are selling your investments uh then you may get a profit or loss when you are selling your investment you are getting a profit entries bank account at or to sell proceeds to investment with book value of investment to an account if it's a loss you have to debit profit and loss account then if a company goes for fresh issue of other kind of shares say for example as i told you for buyback of equity shares we talk about um as i told you uh, preference shares can be um, issued or Uh, you can issue go for debentures also you can issue debentures when you need money you want to raise money uh, for buyback of shares i think the entries are very simple to you if you are going for fresh issue of preferences it can be at par at premium i think no need for me to discuss about these things i think it's clearly given at par at premium you know the shares cannot be issued at a discount i think this is a old note so preference shares application discount and issue of shares i think doesn't uh, have any sense it has been typed maybe they are not updated i think the third point is not relevant that can be ignored you cannot issue shares at discount okay in case of sweat equity shares you can issue shares at discount but generally for public you cannot issue shares at discount and then now this is important i think from fourth entry onwards you will be looking at the entries entries part for uh, understanding this to make payment on buyback of equity shares to make payment of on buyback of equity shares the entry will be equity shares buyback account at or to bank when you are buyback what is it you are buying back equity shares and you suffix only with buyback you know equity shares debit what comes in equity shares coming in and what is it how you are making payment to bank equity shares account at or to bank account then sometimes what happen when you are buying the equity shares you are buying at a more than face value so i think they will be using the word word called as a premium on buyback and that premium on buyback can be adjusted from your security premium or general reserve i think uh, instead of writing two entries what the entry that has been given when we do the problems we discuss on that i think this is easy to you to cancel the shares bought back equity share capital account at our nominal value security premium account you are debiting security premium account when you are buying back of your shares and you are making a payment more than nominal value i think that loss you are adjusting against security premium or suppose security premium is not sufficient you are going for general reserve like when security premium account is not sufficient you can go for general reserve the, in in other words people they 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 also use the word equity share capital account premium on buyback then premium on buyback instead of debiting security premium and general reserve some others they debit premium on buyback and this premium on buyback again will be created and then they debit security premium and general reserve instead of that directly we have eliminated that we can write entry security premium account at our general reserve to equity share back please remember security premium account general reserve is when you are buying back your equity shares which is more than face value that loss is to be adjusted against security premium or general reserve then to transfer free reserves to crr we have discussed already uh, when you are going for uh, free reserves uh, for um, buyback of your shares out of free reserves then i think as i told you we need to create say, capital redemption reserve for that entry will be revenue reserve account at our profit and loss account at our to capital redemption reserve now uh, and you know that you know that capital redemption reserve can be utilized only for issuing fully paid fully paid bonus shares to members okay i think we got one illustration one actually this illustration one we are we will be discussing that it is there in the study meter also we work out on that later on so what i do in the meanwhile is that we got one small problem study material you take out the charms material if you got charms material with you you take charms material i think in charms material i will be working out few problems because i can't like i tried for um, uh, see we don't have the facilities now so we are we are we are held up so for the time being what i am doing is that i i have done the problem already i think this is this simply this problem is based on entries i think there will not be any issue for you so i am just i have also worked out the problem of the study material uh, from a charms material rather and if you look at the first question of 
our charms material problem i think you can see if you got the material whenever that you are coming for discussion please remember in future have your study material charms material you have your icl study material have on notes if you want to make any uh, note on that i think that will be useful now if you look at the question number 1 of charms material page number it's 39 uh, let me read the problem kg limited furnishes the following summarized balance sheet as on 31st march 2016 We got equity share capital fully paid shares one thousand two hundred lakhs, security premium one seventy five lakhs, general is a two sixty five, CRR already existing CRR is there two hundred, P and L account one seventy, twelve percent debentures seven fifty lakhs, credit us seven forty five lakhs, other current liabilities one ninety five, machinery eighteen hundred lakhs, furniture two twenty six, investment seventy four lakhs, stock that is inventory six hundred lakhs, debt us two sixty, cash at bank seven forty. On 1st April 2016, the company announced the buyback of 25% of equity shares at 15 rupees per share. For this purpose, it sold all its investment for 75 lakhs. So they decided to go for buyback of 25% of equity shares. For this purpose, what they have done? They need money. I think they thought of selling the investment. The investment value 74 lakhs. It has been, it has been sold for 75 lakhs. Means very clear, you got a profit of 1 lakh. On after four days later, on fifth April, the company achieved the target of buyback. Then on thirtieth April two thousand sixteen, the company issued one fully paid bonus, one one fully paid equity share of ten rupees by way of bonus for every four equity shares held by the equity shareholders. I think when you are we are going for bonus, I think you have learned that in investment how to go for bonus shares. You also learned in group one company accounts how to go for issue of bonus shares. I think for every Um, four shares existing, one equity share will be given as a bonus share. I think when you talk about the existing four shares, means that you have to calc calculate after 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 deducting buyback of shares. Now buyback here is given that twenty five percent of its equity shares. I think what is the face value? Ten rupees. You are buying it for fifteen rupees. That means there is a loss of how much? Five rupees. As I told you, this loss can be adjusted. I guess this is premium on buy buyback. I'm using the word premium on buyback. This premium on buyback can be adjusted against security premium. Okay, let me go the the chronologically. We can go for the entries part of it. If you look at the entry first entry, that we go for sale of sale of investment. What is the entry? Bank account at R. You can see seventy five lakhs. What is the fa? What is the Uh, book value of investment seventy four lakhs, and uh, you got a profit of one lakh. Entry tell me bank account at R to investment account to profit on sale of investment. I have given the narration also being the investment sold on profit. Then you have to go for the entry for the entries are already given. I just have given the entries according to the notes which have been given to you there in the display. The second entry you are going for buyback. I just told you equity shares you 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 suffix buyback. Equity shares buyback account at R. 25% of equity shares. 25% of equity shares means how much? 1200 into 25%. 1 by 4, 300. 300 into 15. It is coming to 450 lakhs. 450 lakhs to bank account. You made a payment. You got your shares back. And then, what is the nominal value of share that has been bought back? Is 300 lakhs. As I told you, it is to be cancelled. How to cancel equity shares? Cap equity share capital account data three hundred lakhs. And what is the loss you are getting on that one fifty? That one fifty is that bracket I mentioned premium payable on back buyback. So security premium account instead of debiting premium payable on buyback directly, I am using which account? Security premium. If you use premium payable on buyback again, you should add one more entry for cancellation of that. So what I am debiting here? Security premium account data to equity shares. Buyback. That means now you can see equity share buyback account has been cancelled. Is this clear? Equity share buyback account has been cancelled. Equity share capital has been cancelled. Security premium account has been reduced by 150 lakhs. We got existing security premium of 175 lakhs. I think we need not go for general reserve because we are first we have used security premium. Okay. Then, as I told you, when you are using free reserves in this problem, free reserves for creation of CRR. I think you know what are the free reserves in this problem. We got general reserve and P and L account. So first, I am using general reserve. What is the nominal value of a buyback? Is three hundred lakhs. So I need three hundred lakhs. Three hundred lakhs I am using taking from two sixty five lakhs from general reserve. 
and from profit and loss account, I am taking 35 lakhs. So the entry will be general reserve account data, profit and loss account data to capital redemption reserve. I think I have given that being the amount equal to nominal value of the buyback shares has been transferred to CRR. And then we got one more point that we should go for issue of bonus shares. So for bonus shares, as I told you, CRR can be used for issue of bonus shares. Here I have given the note, you can just um, click the button, down button, you can see that amount of bonus shares is 25% of, as I told you, existing shares. What are existing shares? Tell me. 1200 and what is the buyback 300 lakhs so what is the balance it is 900 lakhs 900 lakhs into 25 percent is coming to 225 lakhs so 225 lakhs 225 lakhs i need i need from capital redemption reserve now you already created crr what is crr we have created here 300 lakhs we are already having existing crr also so crr we are having enough crr the CRR is used for issue of bonus shares. The entry capital redemption is an account data to bonus shares account. Then finally, the bonus shares account is being closed by transferring to equity share capital. The entry will be bonus shares account data to equity share capital. I've given the narration also. The, if you look at the fifth entry narration, being the utilization of CRR to issue bonus shares. Now, if you look at the sixth entry, being the issue of one bonus, one bonus equity share for every four equity shares held. Then after that, cash at bank after issue of bonus shares. This calculation you need for preparing the balance sheet after buyback. Cash bank, cash at bank is given as 740 lakhs. And sale of investment by selling investment, you got 75 lakhs. Total 850 lakhs you're having. What is the amount that is being paid for buyback of shares is 450 lakhs. And the balance amount is which is available with the company is 365 lakhs. I think you can go for easily balance sheet you can prepare. We have learned that in number of chapters you have done, amalgamation you have done, internal construction you have done, in company final accounts you have learned that I am avoiding it. I think in balance sheet, you know how to go to notes to accounts, equity share capital will be reduced by 300 lakhs, security premium account, you need to go for adjustment because you, you have used a part of it. General reserve will not appear. CRR will be added. That CRR is to be added and then just to be uh, whatever you have used CRR for issue of bonus is to be subtracted. PNL account is to be adjusted because we have created CRR and debentures will remain as it is, Sunday creditors will remain as it is, other current, li current liabilities will remain as it is, and investment will not appear in the new balance sheet. In cash at bank will be taken as 365. I think that you balance sheet, you all can do it. Thanks, my dear friends. This is uh, lecture number one, and we work out some problems. And as I told you, the maximum shares uh, which, we, which, which we can use for um, buyback, maximum number of shares, I think that we work out one problem in the next class. So, we will be meeting again in the next class. If required, I will be adding, uh, I will be adding webcam also. If any issues, please do send feedback so I can improve in recording the video. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. God bless you all.